Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. So today's video, guys, as always, brought to you by BetOpenly.com, the world's first peer-to-peer -peer sports betting site, guys. Definitely need to check them out. Uh, okay, so yesterday, guys, um, we went two and one uh, in free picks. We went four and two overall for the day in uh, in masterclass. Um, it was it was actually nice. Look, it was nice for a change. Um, we look at that that Austin P game, and uh, I mean, I think we can all acknowledge at this point. Over the past, you know, a couple weeks, we've been on the wrong end of a few doozies, a couple last minute three pointers, and how nice was it to see a few last second three pointers miss yesterday? Um, one of them being in Austin P game, guys. We managed to get that cover by uh, a full one point, so we got that full one point cover. Um, we lost the, the San Diego Santa Clara game. Frustrating game to watch. Um, it, it looked early on like, you know, life was looking good. And we were going to go 3-0 and in free picks, but uh, ultimately fell a little bit short in that game. Uh, second half scoring dried up. But um, we had uh, most decided easy cover in the Toronto, uh, Toronto Ottawa game. Uh, we had over six and a half. Game played out kind of how I said it would. You know, I, I said Hutchinson was going to play last night. Didn't I say it would be a good spot for him to play? Um, that, to me, is like a no-brainer. It's like, you know, coaching 101. That, that, that's where you get your backup in that spot. Um, Hogwarts guys did what he does and gave up goals, and they, they switched goalies and made no difference. I mean, the Leafs and Ottawa played a 2-1 game the game before that, and this was not going to be a 2-1 game. And most decidedly, it wasn't a 2-1 game. Um. So anyways, guys, I, look, I, I read afterwards, um, I, I read, I, I missed it, I didn't comment on it. Some people comment in the comment section, well, what about the Leafs total or the Leafs total? Um, I just like not overthinking this game. I like betting the total because, again, you know, we're looking at this from two sides, okay? Um, you know, Hogberg guys, obviously, you know, he's got some holes in his game. He doesn't have a lot of defense. I'm not, I'm not going to like throw the whole blame on this guy. But he's been bad. He has been bad. Um, but on the flip side of the coin, you know, we're pretty sure Hutchinson goes. That counts for something, right? I mean, you figure, you know, Ottawa's probably not going to be held to one goal. So, you know, does that help us overall? Sure it does, right? Um, you know, in which case Ottawa in this game did end up scoring, a, a, you know, at a decent pace. So, um, yeah, happy about yesterday. So we'll move on, though, guys. Um, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um Yesterday, Masterclass, we had Pittsburgh and Islanders uh, under five and a half even money. Uh, we got that win. Um, we uh, we lost the one that, the one we lost in uh, in free picks or in Masterclass, I should say. We had a player prop. We had James Harden over seven and a half rebounds at plus one ten. Um, yeah, yeah. So a few other people they stole his rebounds. No, but you know what? Uh, I think he finished with five. Um, most of those coming in, in the fourth quarter. So I think he had two in the first quarter, three in the fourth quarter, uh, not nothing in the like second and third. So anyways, is what it is. So four and two onward and upward. Here's what I got guys. I have seven total plays today. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do four picks in free picks and three in masterclass. And then over the weekend, that role will probably be reversed. But today I'm going to do four picks and free picks, three in masterclass. Um, all right. So first one, guys, Robert Morris and Detroit. Robert Morris and Detroit. We are going back to the old first half under, guys. And we're going to go first half under, under 67 and a half. Under 67 and a half, Robert Morris and Detroit. Vegas continues to shade these lines from where they should be. That being said, this season, it still seems to be the more profitable play um, to go with first half unders. And then you know what? If Vegas decides that they want to continue to shade these lines, shade these lines, shade these lines, we'll keep a close eye on it. If they're, they're going to keep doing that, we'll pick our spots and we'll find the value on the over. We'll make them pay for, for trying to shade under lines on first half, right? I mean, look, they're seeing this this way that people are betting first half right now because we're seeing what's happened in, you know, in the second half. And we don't exactly know why this year the second half, you know, team teams are down 18 points. Two minutes left to go. They're fouling. For what reason? We don't know. We don't know. But they are. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to bet these. But I, again, guys, I, th I think there's still good value on this line. 
Um, but we're kind of at that, that cusp, that threshold where, you know, Vegas continues to shade these lines. Um, you know, we'll find something else of value. Maybe we'll be on the overs, right? You never know. So Robert Morris, Detroit guys, under 67 and a half for the first half. Uh, next play, guys, North Dakota State. North Dakota State minus one. Um, I entertained this briefly as a two-unit play. Uh, so, you know, I'm hoping that out there you guys are not hearing. That means it's a two-unit play. It's not. It's going to be a one-unit play. Um, we lost plus one and dropped down to minus one, guys. There was some steams, so obviously. A few other people out there with the same idea as me that uh, you think that North Dakota State should be favored in this game. Um, I think at plus one, I know you think, okay, well, it's plus one versus minus one. That's not a huge difference, but long-term it is in terms of, you know, when we're dealing with, 54, 55, 56% win rates, those little things make a big difference, right? Um, so we're going to go with a one unit play here, guys. We have to lay them as the favorite now. I don't mind that, but, uh, you know, a little bit of value is gone from being able to get them at plus one. So uh, North Dakota State, guys, minus one. All right, uh, two hockey plays for you guys. First one, um, now this is going to be counterintuitive to, I, I think, what a lot of you guys would think. This is the kind of game where, you know, if I'm wrong, it looks ugly. If I'm wrong, I'll tell you up front, it looks ugly. But I think long-term, guys, I know long-term, this is a great play. And that's to take the Vancouver Canucks minus 110, guys. Um, right off the bat, I know. People look at, you can just look at the, the winning rate, right? You look at the, the record for Winnipeg, look at the record for Vancouver, and you think, wow, wow, this is a no-brainer, no right? No-brainer going to take, uh, take Winnipeg. No, that, that's not the case, guys. I've seen the public likes Winnipeg so far, okay? I've seen a lot of these games, guys. These are the types of games where Vegas makes a lot of money, okay? There's already two steam bets on Vancouver, which I suspect there would be. When I see that line open up, where it opened up, guys, I'm thinking this is the kind of game where, you know, I'm not saying Vegas has inside information, but they know something, you know, something for Vancouver to be basically even money, slight favorite. Um, I also have two system indicators on this game, guys come in at 59 and 60 percent over the life of those systems this year those systems hitting it better than 69 percent 69 71 percent this year that's and that's a short-term anomaly but the systems are clicking so um vancouver canucks guys minus 110 and i'm gonna look like a dink if they lose but it's a good pick long term for us guys trust me uh next florida panthers Florida Panthers, guys, we've got to lay a little bit of juice on this one. Uh, I'm comfortable doing so with the Panthers. Okay, so uh, you have two teams here, guys, on two totally different trajectories, okay? Uh, there's no question Detroit is a rebuild team. Detroit was such a dynasty for so many years that, um, you know, still seeing Detroit when they pop up in a matchup, you know, my first instinct is like, oh, Detroit's got to win that game, but no. Uh, Detroit's been a little lousy the last few years. Um, you know, their, their dynasty that they had for, I, I think they set an NHL record for years in the playoffs. Uh, I don't know what it was like 20 plus years making the playoffs. They had some awesome, awesome players over the years, but they're in transition and they have some great young players on this team. Don't get me wrong. They will be a good team again shortly. And, and the thing that Detroit is good at is developing talent, but the key assets of Detroit actually help us long-term in that Detroit does hold some of its young talent back, keeps them developing in other leagues, keeps them playing in the minors, and they slowly develop the talent. They did it with Datsuk, they do it with Zetterberg, they do it with a lot of their players. And in the beginning, Detroit got criticized for it. Say, this guy's NHL ready, why not bring him up? Well, we let him develop, and he turns into a much better player, okay? I can use case in point, former Toronto Maple Leaf, Nazem Kadri. okay? Nazem Kadri got thrown into the NHL too early, and it ruined him. Nazem Kadri is a great player. Nazem Kadri is, you know, 40, 50 point guy. If he has a lights out year, he might hit 60. Nazem Kadri, if he had been properly brought along and not thrown into the fire, um, he could have been a point of game guy. He could have been an 80 point guy. He has that talent level. But the problem is, you know what? They threw him in the NHL. He struggled. He, 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 his game, his talent was there. He just wasn't there mentally ready to go. And it, it held his, it held him back. So, you guys are saying, okay, well, like, why, why is he telling us this when all he's doing is telling us about Florida? I'm telling you this, guys, because you have to understand, you know, the makeups of some of these teams. And Detroit, guys, they have talent in their organization. Um, 
they have talent on their team, but they're not there developmentally, okay? Now, above and beyond that, guys, Florida Panthers are clicking. They are absolutely clicking. Um, great team this year. This is, this is a team in Florida. I've been waiting for them to come around for years because, again, they are loaded with talent, and now they have talent in their prime, okay? In their NHL prime, guys. Um, I'm not saying this is their, their year to win the cup, but this is their year to put up some big numbers, okay? Um, on the flip side, guys, I'm sorry to say this, but um, Grice playing in, in net for Detroit, I mean, right now, the man couldn't save a beach ball. If they were firing beach balls at him, he would let some in. I, and, you know, historically, guys, he's, he's been a streaky goalie. He's had good runs, bad runs. Um, he, he's just not looking good. He is not looking good right now. He's not seeing the puck well. He's not controlling rebound, guys. Rebound control in hockey is massive. It's part of uh, a lot of the, the adjusted stats that people look at now. Um, it, it's incredible when you when you look at all kinds of different... Um, you know, it used to be like plus minus. Now they have a adjusted plus minus that accounts for the, the strength of players you're playing against. You have adjusted Corsi. You have rebound control for goalies, rebound control. They're, they're judging basically and measuring uh, the distance and angle at which a rebound will come off goalies' pads. And that, why is that important? Okay, if you leave a little three-foot rebound that bounces straight out in front of you, that's where garbage goals are created, guys. Guys crash in the net, just boom, back in the net give up a goal okay if you're redirecting off to the side further out okay that's good or again ideal rebound what's an ideal rebound half a foot right in front down on it okay so all of these things guys are being measured watch Greece in tonight's game if you get a chance to watch this game guys you'll see what i'm talking about hopefully you'll see what i'm talking about florida panthers guys are headed in the right trajectory detroit has talent but they're not there yet guys um They'll make mistakes defensively, and this Florida team can make them pay. And watch what I'm talking about, about the rebound control. I will not be surprised if they get a nice rebound goal off him tonight. So there you go. That's my prediction of the day. Rebound goal off Thomas Grace uh, for Florida. All right? Uh, to make it 14-1. to 1. No, I'm just kidding. That last part, no. Uh, all right, guys. So that is it for us today. Um, three more plays in Masterclass. If you guys are interested, BenderWins.com is $99 a month. But uh, the first game of Masterclass, guys, goes at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you'll have uh, right around three hours from the time this video gets out. Three hours to, uh, to get that play in. So, yeah, first game, 5 p.m. And, uh, yeah, that's it for us today. So thank you guys very much. And as always, guys, have a very lucky day.